Dr. Valerie Naidu, uitvoerende bestuurder van uh, bezig- en bezigheidsontwikkeling en innovatie van die Water Navorsingscommissie. Um, en dan ook Virginia Molose, navorsingsbestuurder Water Navorsingscommissie. So this interview is going to be in Afrikaans. Um, it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Let's, let's start uh, with you, Valerie. Just the background, who you are, where you're from, what you're doing. Okay, so uh, essentially I'm uh, from the eastern coast of South Africa, Durban. Uh, I did my degree at uh, University of KwaZulu-Natal, and my specialization is largely around wastewater treatment systems. Mm. When I joined the WRC, I essentially was around dealing with industrial water management as well as wastewater technologies. And right now my role is around creating effective partnerships so that we can realize impact in the uh, in terms of the research and in innovation that we create. Mm. Yeah. But you're also, I mean, with PhD in, you know, water systems and water. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you think you're going to do that when you're at school. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. So you were fascinated by water. Yeah, it's the ocean, I think. Well, I think, I think I've always had the sense that uh, of, of, a, of a broader social good kind of, mm. you know, sort of nature. So you, I think when you're doing that, you're kind of attracted to the science and engineering spaces where mm. you're taking care of something or protecting something. So I suppose that's how I started. How mm. I fell into water was really purely, purely by accident, because mm. when you do your undergrad degree, you don't really know where you're going to end up. Yes. But that's beautifully say, you know, said is when I fell into water. Uh, Virginia, <laughs> your background? Um, I'm from Rustenburg, Mukhwasa to be in particular, and I studied more the social sciences. Mm. Uh, growing up thinking that I can solve the world's problems, started with social work, but then didn't work out, I realized now it's more about the interaction with m- more people. Mm. So more, more and more got into gender work, working particularly with rural communities, um, looking at rights realization and things like those. Mm. And that moved me into water and sanitation. Um, before I joined the Water Research Commission, it was more on sanitation, health and hygiene promotion, awareness around conservation of water, and so on. And now at Water Research Commission, <clears throat> it's really focused on looking at uh, still women's issues, social issues, mm. but also looking at multiple use water systems because the focus there really is about how do we improve rural livelihoods, mm. particularly the vulnerable livelihoods of women um, which are impacted by poverty and, and, and unemployment and mm. such. And especially yeah. when one, one thinks of sanitation, you know, yes. um, in a certain area <coughs> of South Africa, it's just a normal day-to-day living, but the biggest part of South Africa, it's been a math, massive challenge in, for the past 20 years. Let's get to the Water Research Commission, just um, the role and mandate um, and what it's all about. Okay, so, I mean, essentially we're a, we're a public entity, a Section 3A company. We were founded by the Water Research Act of 1971. I suppose that makes us about 45 years now. Mm. Uh, so we're quite old. We're in the midlife crisis. Yes, midlife yeah. crisis, yes. <laughs> Uh, Struggling to jog now. <laughs> exactly. Knees are getting sore. <laughs> Trying to find our <laughs> yeah, way yeah. around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, uh, essentially our role is to steer and fund research mm. in the w- all water-related activities. So we, we cross the entire water cycle. Mm. And uh, our role is also to coordinate, to communicate, you know, and to essentially do effective tech transfer, but also to enhance and build capacity in the sector. So our new sort of area that we've started to develop within the WRC is, is also to look at the entire water ecosystem because mm. you can't take knowledge out if the ecosystem is not willing to take the knowledge. Mm. So that's part of our role as well is to try and enhance and create the right enabling environment for that. And I saw, I saw a picture yesterday on Twitter about the Voldam at 22%. Mm. And, it's, and, it's, and it's scary. I think, I mean, like, it's, you know, it just can just disappear. It's a, it's a massive issue. Mm. Um, so now, if we get back to the water, uh, women in water program, um, it's not women swimming in rivers, um, <laughs> just to, to know. Although you know, that's quite fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's been quite, quite fun. Uh, so <laughs> it started, it was launched 2015 in partnership mm. with the Department of Water and Sanitation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what is, you just give us an overview about this program. Okay. So the Women Empowerment Program, like you say, it was launched in 2015. It was at a consultative conference where women across the country were called in to um, come attend this event. Firstly, to look at, um, create space rather, Mm. where women can interact and network. But the overall objective of the program was really, it's really about um, how do we support and how do we strengthen women's um, 
ent- women entrepreneurs in the water space. Mm. And, and, and Minister's idea about this program was really to look at how do we transform the water sector. If you le- look at the water sector, businesses that are operational there, it's often male-owned businesses. If there are women-owned companies, they're doing small aspects mm. to the water and sanitation, small little work there. But the major um, work that is being done there is still done by very large companies owned by male uh, mm. mostly. So, so the idea was really from the minister, how do we transform this, this sector? How do we make a difference? But also how do we make women to be really participants in the economy? Mm. So <clears throat> the program itself has about three projects. It is the incubator project, it is the mentorship project, and the forum. The mm. incubator project is looking strictly at enterprises. And um, enterprises, they're really looking at how do we pair these small, medium-owned businesses by women mm. with fairly large companies so that they can learn and grow from um, successful companies. And mentorship project is focused on enterprises and professionals, young people who just graduated and are coming into the sector. Mm. How do they learn the ropes, understand the sector, and really build a successful career um, in the sector. Mm. But the same objective with the enterprises, the mentorship program remains as the incubator. Then the last one is about uh, the forum. The forum intention is to build a platform where women can come together, support each other as as entrepreneurs, as individual professionals, professionals, but also for women to come together and network and start to really have a voice in the sector. Mm. Generally or usually, there are these major events happening in the sector. There's annual Stockholm where people meet annually, but what is the what is the women's voice in those kinds mm. of events? I'm going to stop yeah. you there, but I, I mean, you summed it up very, very mm. good. Um, because it makes sense to me as well. And I get through it, I said, I nog nooit vrouwen loodgieters gesien het nie, mm. maar toe besef ek, ek het een draaien laat oordoen, en dit was, uh, it was a women's company that was plumbers. They used men for the hard work, but it was owned by, by, by women, women, actually, in Pretoria. I would really like to know about the Women Empowerment Program, WEP, and that will be launched tomorrow, the 14th of October. Please give us more about the objectives. Okay. So tomorrow there's this big event in Kempton Park, and if... Um, as I said before, that um, this program overall is really to transform um, the water sector, to allow or to create spaces for women to be participants in the economy. So tomorrow what we're doing is really to firstly <clears throat> announce the people who've been selected in the program so that the pub- public know who these women are. And secondly also, it's really to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the women's 1956 Women's March. Mm. If you recall, this, this march was about the very objectives of this program. It was about um, creating access um, for women to be nearer urban areas where employment um, is available, where services delivery, water and sanitation is far more improved than in rural areas or in the former Bantu stands, but also to start to see women as participants in the economy, not just um, people looking for employment, but also as people to create employment. Mm. So we are celebrating that that victory because we see today's democracy having been enabled by matches of 1956, but also other protests that happened back in the day. So tomorrow it would be about it would be about that. But also what we're doing tomorrow is to bring in together women to create, again, spaces for them to be able to network. We are going to be having women entrepreneurs across the water sector. It's an opportunity for them to start dialoguing, to start talking to each other, to start sharing their own real life stories, journeys about what it means to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. We are also bringing in big business, people who have done this for a long time, to share their own stories. So it would be a great networking opportunity, picking up of lessons, sharing of information, so that we are really having inputs and and, and feedback on how this program can be strengthened going forward. Because women don't know there's a, a future yeah. working in water. Dr. Valerie, before I get to my question about the stats, where did you get your dress? <laughs> <laughs> 
I want one as well. Oh. I'm going to dress it. I'm going to dress myself. Um, let's talk about some of the statistics on women working in the water sector. Um, uh, a top leadership positions, the percentage of female water scientists. How's that stats looking? So, so I think if in one of the studies we did do where we, 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 where we were charting sort of women's journey in the water sector, we did pick up, for example, for senior positions. Uh, within, say, Department of Water and Sanitation, I think the numbers are around 60 to 70 percent. So mm. that was due to a, a policy, an internal policy, to drive that, that aspect. But then when you move on to, say, water boards, mm. uh, they were around 46 percent with about 20, 25 percent sitting in directorships, for mm. example. And uh, it's a lot lower when you start getting to local government. And that's mm. because local government is a lot about implementation and technical, right? So mm. obviously, there in that space, you, you need the guys that normally come out of universities mm. technically with those degrees. And so this is the reason for that shortfall. But what we're trying to do is create the space for the opening mm. of more women, to, one, to take on a career, to mm. do those kind of degrees, and to say, yes, I can climb and I can reach uh, certain positions, both from my qual qualification point of view, but also in terms of seniority. Mm. Uh, if I had to look, say, for, a, for example, the Water Research Commission, so... Uh, if I to look at our stats for research and uh, research and uh, researchers or project leaders within the Water Research Commission mm. that are female, we see that our numbers have, have uh, sort of trended upwards. Mm. Uh, we're now sitting at between 30 and 38 percent mm. of, of female. But still, I think leaders. still too low. Uh, ladies, we're definitely going to get you back, and I think just to create opportunities for women. Thank you so much for visiting us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, or about water.